A-B tests help make your iOS app better by comparing the impact of changes on key metrics. PostHog makes A-B testing on iOS simple. To show you how, this tutorial will guide you on how to add PostHog to your iOS app and run an A-B test. We'll create a basic A-B test to see how the background color of a screen affects the click-through rate of a button. All right, so the very first thing you need to do once you open up Xcode is create a new project. So let's go into our multi-platform iOS and let's go ahead and create an app using Xcode. All right, so now for the product name, you can name it whatever you would like. I'm gonna name it Post Hog AB Testing. And now you can add an optional team if you want. You'll need an organization identifier. That's what I already have. Under the interface, make sure you're using Swift UI. We're not gonna be doing storyboard like the old way of doing iOS applications. This is all new, so go ahead and use Swift UI. The language we're gonna be using is Swift, and we don't need to set up any kind of dependencies for storage. So let's just go ahead and click Next, and then I'm just gonna create this application in my main directory. All right, so over here we can see that we're getting our content view, which is the automatic view of an iPhone running. And over here we have our content view. And this is gonna be kind of like the bread and butter of our application. We're gonna be creating another UI screen using Swift UI, but right now most of our logic is gonna fall into this content view. So the very first thing we wanna create in here is an at state private var navigate to feature screen equals false. And then this V stack, this vertical stack that starts, we can just go ahead and delete all of this because we're just gonna be kind of creating our own code to start with. And we're gonna get a couple of errors, but that's okay. Let's start by creating a navigation stack. Brackets. Inside our navigation stack, we wanna say V stack brackets, where we're gonna create an image of system name of type globe. where we're gonna have our image scale is going to be large, and then we're gonna say foreground style of dot tint. Next, we wanna say text is going to be hello world in double quotation marks. And then we wanna go ahead and say button. Go to next screen is what the name of the button is going to be. and navigate to feature screen is equal to true. We then outside of the button, we wanna say dot padding, dot background color is gonna be color dot blue. Foreground color is gonna be dot white. And corner radius is going to be 10. Now, outside of all this, we wanna say dot padding, and then we wanna say dot navigation destination. And then inside here, we wanna say is presented is going to be navigate to feature screen with a dollar sign in front. And then inside the brackets, we wanna say feature screen view is test variant. where we can just say false to start. And you'll see exactly when we create this. So now we wanna go ahead and create this feature screen view. So in this post hog AB testing, where our content view currently is, let's go ahead and say right click new file. We wanna make sure that it's a Swift UI view under the iOS filter. Let's go ahead and click next. Let's go ahead and just name it our feature screen view. Click next, and then boom, we have our feature screen view. Now inside this, we have var is test variant of type Boolean. And now inside here, our body, so we have our var body of some view. Let's go ahead and just remove this text, Z stack. And now inside the Z stack, we're gonna say color 
is test variance. We're going to have a ternary operator question mark dot green if it's true or red if it's false. And then dot edges ignore safe area is going to be all. All right, now we're going to create a button with click me inside. And now outside of this, we're going to say dot padding dot background where the color is blue. Dot foreground color of white. And corner radius of 10. And here we're going to need to pass in a test variant if we want it to work right here. But just for now, we're just going to say, hey, let's just go ahead and comment that out. And if we go ahead and press play, so this play button will allow us to be able to build an iOS project. It's going to be creating a um, emulator or simulator to be able to use an iPhone in real life so we can practice using this. And here it is, it's starting up, it's an iPhone 15 Pro. And once this is running, it's going to be able to run our application. So it says, hello world, go to next screen. And if we click it, it's gonna give us a red background with a click me inside. Now, so far, we haven't implemented any type of feature flags or anything. So every time we click this, the background will be red. And that's because we are passing in false for is test variant. And inside our feature screen view, we say, hey, if this is true, return green, else return red, and we're always passing in false. So the else is always gonna be getting hit. Now, one thing we need to do to be able to use post hog in an iOS application is import the dependency. And there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can do this by using the Swift package manager, or we can use like CocoaPods. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna go up here and use the package dependency for our Xcode project. So up here, we can say file, and we can say add package dependency. Now, I already have this here, but what we need to do is post this in our search for the package URL if we want to be able to find this package. So typically we'd have to say HTTPS colon slash slash github.com where we need to search for our post hog slash post hog dash iOS dot git. Now, when you type this in, this post hog iOS will appear. And now you can download and add this into our project. So if we go ahead and just say, add package, we'll see that it's fetching it and trying to get all the dependencies. And then at the end, we can say add to our project. Now, when we add to the project, we can see inside our left hand, which is our project directory, we have this post hog 3.22. This is the newest version of post hog as of this recording. So if we look at this, we can see that, hey, post hog is implemented in our project. So now that we have post hog, the next thing we need to do is implement and add post hog into our application. So if we go up to our post hog AB testing app, this is going to be the part of the app where we implement post hog. So the very first thing we need to do is import post hog, which is the new package that we just installed into our application. Now inside our post hog AB testing app of type app, we now need to say init. So we can say init parentheses brackets, let post hog API key equal something. Let post hog host equal something. Let configuration equals post hog config. Or API key is going to be of our post hog API key. And our host is going to be of our post hog host. We then want to say post hog SDK dot shared dot setup where we pass in our configuration. Now post hog host is going to be pretty easy. It's either going to be app dot post hog dot com or it's going to be eu dot post hog dot com. So inside here, I'm just going to go ahead and say HTTPS colon slash slash app dot post hog dot com. Now our post hog API key is going to be unique to your account. So what you need to do is go ahead and go into your application. 
Let's go all the way to the bottom where you can see settings. And now if we scroll down, we can see our project API key. So if we go ahead and copy this, and then we go back into our application, we can just paste this right here. All right, so now let's go back into our feature screen view. And right here where we left it blank inside our click me button, let's go ahead and add some post hog information. But first we need to go ahead and just say import post hog. And these are gonna have brackets of our post hog SDK dot shared dot capture where we can pass in our feature button clicked. And let's go ahead and save this. So each time this click me button is clicked, we are going to capture that event and name it feature button clicked. So let's go ahead and restart up our application by creating our simulator. So now if we say go to next screen, each time we click me, this is going to save in our activity. Therefore, if we go back into our project and we click activity and we reload, we can see that these feature buttons are coming in and we are now being able to catch them within our activity table inside your personal post hog application. Now, this is awesome for being able to track activities in post hog, but what we really want to do is some A-B testing. So inside our post hog, we can come down here and click A-B testing, where we can say we want to create a new experiment. And you can do this either in the top right hand corner, or you can do this right in the middle and just say create an experiment. Now, one of the names we want to do is we want to name this iOS dash background dash color dash experiment. We want the feature flag key to be the exact same naming convention. Now, when you're doing A-B testing, we are having a feature flag. So part of the people are going to be testing the new feature while the other amount of people are gonna be doing the original. So it's A-B testing. And here you can add an optional description if you would like. We have two different kind of experiment variants. We have our controlled and we have our test and we can leave these exactly how they are. And now let's go all the way to the bottom where we can see save as draft. Now, when we say save as draft, what we're really seeing is we have our AB testing right here where we can see that there's no AB testing yet happening. But if we go into our feature flags, we can see that we have our feature flag for our iOS background color experiment. Now, what we want to do first is let's go into our AB testing. Let's go ahead and click. And now what we want to do is click launch. What this does is it now is running our AB testing. We can see that by our status shifting to running. Inside our feature flags, and we click our feature flags, we can scroll down and we can see examples on how our you know, feature flags are going to work. It's either going to be test or it's going to be control. And we have it set as of right now so that 50% of the people that run this application are gonna get the controlled experiment while the other 50 are gonna get test. We haven't yet set up any of this yet, but this is essentially what it's doing. And now the next thing that we need to do is let's go up here and do our edit. We wanna click edit and we want to say enable feature flag. So if this is not yet clicked for you, you wanna make sure that is clicked. And then let's come down here and say save. So now if we go ahead and look at our feature flags, our status is enabled and it's going to be to all 100% of our users, which is just us. And if we go to our AB testing, we can see that it is successfully running. So now for the final step, we need to add this experiment into our code. So let's go ahead and go open our Xcode and inside our content view, is where we need to implement this navigation of control versus test, which is our A-B testing. So right above our body, let's go ahead and create a new piece of state, which is gonna be private var is test variant, which we are going to start as false. And now inside our button where we say go to next screen, what we need to do here now is before we navigate to feature screen, we want to do two things. We want to say let flag value equal 
our post hog. And before we can start doing that, we need to import post hog. And now we can say post hog SDK dot shared dot get feature flag. Now inside our get feature flag is where we need to call out our feature flag for our AB testing. So if we go back here, we can see that our feature flag is going to be called iOS background color experiment. And just to make sure that that's not typed wrong, go ahead and copy it right here from your post hog interface. Let's go back into our application. And right here, let's go ahead and say double quotes, iOS background color experiment. Now, what this is going to return is not a string value. So make sure we say it is as a string. And now we just need to write a simple if statement. So if our flag value is equal to test, then we can say is test variant is now going to be equal to true. And just for us to be able to see, I'm going to create a print statement of whatever this flag value is. So now if we go ahead and just rerun our application and I move our terminal up so we can see what's going on here, we say go to next screen, we can see that it's going to be printing control and it's printing control every single time. Now, luckily, it only changes the true when we're in test. And remember, half the people get control and half of the people are getting test. Now, we're just gonna be getting control every single time. And what we need to do also is say, hey, instead of is test variant always equal to false, we want it to be able to equal whatever test variant is. So even though we're just getting control right now, when we do get true, we want to be able to change the background color to green. Now, what we can see here is that we're always going to be getting control. Now, this makes it slightly difficult because we're the only user inside here. So now let's go back to our feature flags and let's go ahead and click this. And now let's go up to our edit button. Now inside our feature flags, this is where we are setting that everything needs to be 50 50. But if we scroll down and we see the release conditions, we can see that set one is what sets the condition to match all of the users. So we're saying roll out to all 100% of users in this set will match approximately 100% of total users. Now, since it's 50-50, it's going to be 50-50, but we've already been set and we've already been selected as the control. Now, what we can add here is an optional override. If we click this, we can say, hey, we want all users to go to test because we're the only one right now. And so we need to set it for controlled and test. If we now set this to test and we click save, we can see that the feature flag is saved. And now if we go back into our Xcode and I'm just gonna rerun the application just for simplicity's sake so we can see the difference side by side. But now we know that, hey, if we are test in our AB testing, we wanna change the at is test variant to true, which will give us a green background. So now if we say go next, we can see that we now have a green background with a click me button. If we go back, we can just keep doing this back and forth. And that's because we just set up and overrode all of our users to now use the test. Again, if we go back here and we go into our feature flags, edit, and we say, hey, we want it now to just be not overrode. So we just want to keep it as a random variant and we click save. And now we go back to our application. We're going to get green right now, but if we rerun our application, we can see that now we're going to get our red background again. And that's essentially how you do AB testing using post hog in iOS. Now, one cool thing you can also do now is now that we have our feature flags and we have our AB testing, if we go back into our experiments and we say we wanna to go to our iOS background experiment, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can now see our experiment results. Now, the probability that the variant is best is 74% and that's gonna be our control and that's because we had way more control, you know, opportunities than test, but it's going to give us a test versus control breakdown with the percent of what the probability of the best option is. Now, this was just for background colors, but if you have like a real life application and you're trying to figure out which solution is better, you can easily implement feature flags and do A-B testing right here in post hog. And it gives you a ton of information. It'll give you all the total amounts, 
all the days and the months, the screens of the control and the test, and a handy graph so you can see exactly what you're needing to look at to be correct in your decision. And it's all about just getting the right data to make the best decision possible. And you know, Postog is here to do that for you. All right, well, I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next.